Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I'm Hannah Wilson, and we're putting Gemma Kenny through her paces today in the shoes of a CEO. And remember that you, our live audience, can access free business and management con content by clicking the link in the chat. Gemma, how is it going so far? It is going all right. I, yeah. mean, I think it's going good. So far, I've done my marketing customer research, got the components of a business plan, and I'm ready to fast track to the next business challenge. Yes, you are. Well, you have Zoom through the business journey and now you're in a position to hire more people. We've got a short list of candidates for you to join your core team. And uh, this is for an app developer, taking it off your hands. Mm. So your task is to identify the strongest, most suitable candidate. Before we dive in though, let's hear from our OU Originals about any red flags to look out for. QVT. The red flags that I look out for when hiring people are um, being not prepared when you are coming for an interview and not tailoring your experience towards the business need. That is definitely a red flag for me. Guys, one of my biggest pet hates with people that um, come for interviews within our business, um, instantly uh, I'm sort of putting that in the red box straight away, would be when somebody comes late. Um, I think that for an interview, you should be at least 15, 10 minutes early. Um, and if you're not, it kind of makes me question your character a little bit. It makes me think, do you really want this job? Because if it was me and I had to be somewhere at 8 a.m., I'd be leaving my house at 7 a.m., even if it only took a half an hour journey to make sure I was there in time. So I know things happen, but ultimately you're in control. So if somebody comes late to an interview, for me, it's a no. Hi Gemma, Anne-Marie here, CEO of Stemets, trustee at the Institute for the Future of Work and author of She's in Control. In an interview, I always like to focus on the excitement that someone has for what we do as an organisation, um, but in detail. I think it's quite an interesting one where the concept of whatever your business might be or your organisation might be, a lot of folks might support and might uh, be excited about, but the way that you do it uniquely is something that I always want to look out for and see that candidates genuinely understand the way we do what we do as much as is possible from all the resources that are out there. So that's definitely something that I that I look for. And it's a red flag actually when folks haven't done their research on who we are as an organization or aren't able to answer beyond a really kind of high level view what it is exactly that we do to solve the problem that we're working on as an organization. Mm, okay, Gemma, red flags. Is that gonna help you out, do you think, with yeah. choosing your next candidates to hire? Absolutely fascinating. Yeah, I bet. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so let's just go for it. Dive straight in. Hit okay. it, Gemma. Let's All do right. it. All right. So, uh, question one to my candidates. This feels very blind. Day. Yes, I love it. Um, I hope that you're well. What are your plans this weekend? And what are you having? Stop the show. Stop the show. I know. We are still live, guys. But Gemma, you have fallen in to a classic booby chat there. Chit chatting. Mm, we're not feeling it. Let's hear from Dr. Volker Payton, OU lecturer and chattered psychologist about why. Hit it. Hi Gemma, it's, uh, it's great to be here. And uh, uh, so a little bit about myself, I'm Volker Payton, I'm a lecturer at the Open University and my um, uh, interest in research and businesses is very much related to trust in recruitment processes. Uh, specifically looking at the impact that recruitment processes have on applicants. Um, and um, I'm also uh, a coaching psychologist, so I do a little bit of uh, freelance work. Um, and um, in my uh, spare time, um, I do uh, take people and help them to walk over beds of glowing coal. But more to the point, why is this not a good question uh, to use in an interview? And there is actually um, some legal reasons for why that's not a good question. Um, uh, uh, quite a few years ago now, sometime, um, I think it was back in the 90s or the 80s, uh, there was a very landmark case where uh, a, a recruiter was taken to court by the uh, applicants for using questions um, uh, and particular psychometric tests that were not obviously re relevant to the job. 
And so, so, so why I would consider this question perhaps not to be a good question, as the first, certainly not as the first question in the interview, would be because one could be questioning the relevance of this information to the job interview. Um, particularly given that what people do on the weekend very much gives an indication of their lifestyle um, uh, or their marital status or whether they have children potentially could also kind of lead to some unconscious bias flowing in. So, for example, if somebody said they spent their weekend at an uh, LGBTQ festival, you know, that potentially could open up uh, a whole avenue for discrimination. Uh, but also, if they didn't want to answer that question, they would feel quite un perhaps quite uncomfortable being put in a situation where they would have to uh, to answer that question. So it's it's not a good question. Um, so good, so good questions then by 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 exclusion is are questions that help the candidate to be at ease in in the process. So they could be just very open questions, such as, so tell us a little bit about yourself um, uh, and about why you've applied for this role. You know, something very general. Most candidates will have thought about the answers to these questions. Um, you could perhaps, as you're greeting the the applicant. Have a very informal conversation, uh, but again, it's it's important about not leading the client down a particular path, uh, the the candidate down a particular path. Um, yeah, so so yes, absolutely. Be you know the the lesson here is be very mindful of how you ask questions and what questions you ask because they could be seen as irrelevant. In this case, I would almost certainly argue they're irrelevant, and uh, and also create problems for candidates for all sorts of complex reasons. Very interesting indeed. Make sure everybody you keep an eye out for those red flags. And also guys, we've got our poll happening, Twitter and Instagram, get involved. Which candidate do you want to choose to help Gemma out? We want the dream candidate for her to hire. Now, I'm going to have a little chat with the candidates guys. Why not? I'm coming over, diddle it, diddle it, diddle it, blind day. I'm telling it guys, let's do this. Right, we've got three. Hello, what's Hello. your name? My name's Dylan. Dylan, hi Dylan, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Feeling confident? No, not really. Not really? Okay, fair enough, Dylan. Sorry, we're going to go to candidate number two. What's your name? My name's Cassandra. Cassandra. Feeling confident, Cassandra? Um, relatively, yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks. Hasn't she got a beautiful RP voice? I like it. I'm going to come over now. Over here. We need music, don't we, guys? Okay, how are you doing? What's your name? I'm good. I'm Maya. Maya. What a beautiful name, Maya. <laughs> Feeling confident today? Yeah, very much. Yes. Fabulous. And we've also got our live audience in here. How are we doing, guys? Yeah. Awesome. Let's do this, guys. I'm going to head over to Gemma now and let's do it. So, Gemma, we've hit it off there on the crazy question. Yeah. Now we're going to go into your official first question. Hit it. Let's I mean, do given this. another chance as a CEO, hey? You've I just got, got it. too friendly. I just wanted to find out about lunch. But <laughs> back to being professional. Candidates, can you tell me about your biggest accomplishment with a tech project or a new launch, please? I'm going to start with candidate two. Okay. Hi, Gemma. Um, firstly, thanks ever so much for the interview. I really appreciate your time and um, I really love what Dream Streamer wants to accomplish. So thank you. Um, basically, I've developed apps for B2B and B2C purposes. And most recently, I developed an app. I, I led a team to develop the app. Uh, it was for an insurance company. It was an internal portal and it had to facilitate a large volume of data processing every week. So what we wanted to do with that was to, to monitor and predict the effectiveness and the viability of an insurance scheme. So the crucial things were speed and accuracy with that data. So we set out before we launched it uh, with a really solid framework for evaluating that and made sure that after actually just two months we'd achieve those KPIs. Um, and importantly, it came in under budget. Uh, I've developed an app in my spare time to, to track that. Ooh. Incredible, Amazing. very impressive. Mm. Um, okay, candidate three, can you beat that? <laughs> yeah, you're right, Gem. I also did one recently <laughs> where, of course, I smashed it out of the park, hit all the KPIs, yeah. Of course I was going to do it well, like it's me, do you know what I mean? Wow. Okay, um, moving on to candidate one. Yeah, um, I work on a new app launch and, you know, it was really stressful, really tight deadlines. Um, I managed, like, you know, all the meetings and, and communicating, with, communicating with the team. And it was really stressful, but it was a great achievement to, you know, make the deadline. 
Okay. okay. That's interesting. Very interesting. Wow. Bold characters. Very confident. I'm going to go out <laughs> to the audience, Gemma. Okay. okay. I'm going to have a little chat now with our live audience people. So, oh, I'm excited. One, two, or three. What can I on this one? Hello, guys. How are we doing? Right, audience. What are we feeling? Kind of one, two, or three. I'm going to come to you first. I'm going to come close to you as well. I'm going to get up close and personal. What are we thinking? One, two, or three. Straight from the get go. What are your thoughts so early in? Two. two. Okay, favourite number two. I'm going to come back here. How are we doing? I'm loving your hair. <laughs> Fabulous. Great. One, two, or three. Just off the first question there. Help Gemma out. I'm going to go with number two. Number two. Mm, two's popular. Anyone else a bit different? I quite like number three, personally. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Interesting. Number one. Some fans number one. Thank you, audience. We're going to go back to Gemma now. What we start thinking, Gemma? Um, I still am reserving judgment mm -hmm. because I feel like we need to find out a bit more about the potential candidates. Completely, I completely agree. Should we go for your second one? Yeah, okay. Number two, we're going to start with con candidate number three on this. Can you tell me about a time that you've made a mistake and learned something valuable from it? Um, well, there was this one time where I slagged off my colleague on video. Uh, yeah, it was quite embarrassing, so I wouldn't do that again. I'd only do it on email this time. <laughs> Wow. Candidate one? <laughs> I, I don't make mistakes. Ooh. Candidate two? <laughs> uh, yeah, sadly uh, made a mistake once uh, with a team. An app went to market with an error in it, uh, but we learned from that and we put in a process so that actually we had a, a few safety nets and a really solid quality assessment ahead of anything going out to market. Okay. Um, Very interesting. Absolutely. I mean, I'm... The person that's never made a mistake, I'm just not quite sure that's believable, you know. We all make mistakes, don't we? Yeah. We all make mistakes. Oh, Magic card, by the way. Magic card coming in. Thanks for cocking that, Gemma. <laughs> Lovely. So we've got Michael there saying <laughs> candidate number two. Detail and an absolute winner. Favourite there. Thank you, Michael. Fan of number two there. Don't need that anymore. We like doing that. Okay, <laughs> um, my third question is, do you have any questions for me about the role? Um, either one of you, whoever wants to start. I can start. Um, what are your plans for the company in the future? Mm, well, I'm hoping that we go international because I do like a bit of travel and I feel like collectively work and travel really like works um, and we can have a, a great time. And I just want you know the brand and the company to be seen across the globe. Amazing. But at the same time, it's, it's really important that the ethics and the values are kind of intact with who I am and align with you know a fairness and sense of equality that I think is really important which is going to require key attention to detail regardless of huge ambition. Wow fabulous. Um, any other questions? Oh I have a question how would you monitor or measure even my success in the role? Mm, I mean I'm going to be setting very clear objectives um, that ladder up to the company objectives and hopefully that means that we will go on the journey together and we'll be able to tick them off with glee. Yeah, right, thanks. <laughs> yeah I've got one as well. Do you offer food and if so is there a vegan option? At the moment um, lunch isn't actually provided but um, I'm very open to hearing feedback and uh, the needs of my employees are very important so I'm sure there'll be a vegan option in the canteen, but you might have to pay for it. Wow. Okay. All <laughs> great. Great questions and great answers, Gemma. Interesting. So behind that screen, <laughs> we have got someone that you need to hire. So this is it. It's decision time. Very what, interesting. What do you guys think at home? Please put it in the chat. Please these do. are very interesting, interesting candidates. I agree. <laughs> we would love to hear, especially from number three. I'm, I'm hearing thoughts on that. What about live audience? Shout it out. One, two, or three. What are we thinking? Two. Two. What? Someone said. Someone definitely said three. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Any ones in there? Oh. Okay. We've got a cheeky little one in there. Interesting. All right. Okay. Um, it's decision time, Gemma. Who? Are we oh. Thinking? Okay. Okay. My executive role. I am going to hire for my international business candidate two for Dream Team. Yeah! 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 Yes! Oh my God! Yeah! 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 Ye
to the team kind Thank of you. Two. I love this. Awesome. Looking forward to working with you. Yeah. Thank you. You've got the best boss ever, by the way. Awesome, guys. We will be back again at two o'clock for Gemma's next challenge. Remember to help yourself to the free business and management resources in the chat. And listen up as we hand over to hear from a quick note from Nick Basson, Open University graduate and founder of Nicholas Bassano, a wearable technology brand, and more input from Dr. Volker Payton on hiring a diverse team. We'll see you at two. Woo! Yeah. Company culture is a massive thing as well because I believe what you build and the types of you know kind of interactions that you have they really make what the business is about when you're from an outset um, for example if you're a fitness company um you know and you have certain experiences or certain um certain individuals that are part of those experiences that you have for for the end consumers they really tell an interesting story about what it is that the the brand is about um and the products what they're about as well and i think it's it's an extended experience for the consumer um, to really understand, you know, the story behind the company. Okay, so one one of the most important things for starting a business, if you're not starting the business just on your own and you are going to have employees uh, from the beginning, uh, if you're in a fortunate position to have the funding for it, uh, is is to make sure you've got the right kind of people working with you and and for you um i i say with because when you're working with people it creates a very different dynamic than when it's just people working for you um if you can inspire people you're going to get more from them and that means you work with them rather than people just working for you i think will create greater inspiration uh in in your employees um there's uh uh, you know, obviously, with with recruiting into 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 a startup, finding exactly the right fit in terms of skills, in terms of personality, and um, fit with the culture that you want to create, is going to be a really important uh, issue. And so, how do you find these people? Um, to some extent, you won't know until people are within the organization. So, to some extent, there will be an element of trust that will play into this um, and um, you're going to be forming very personal relationships with your initial employees so it is important that there's a compatibility between yourself and people that at least you can get on with each other however uh, there is a real risk that you might end up recruiting people who are just like you and 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 if that happens potentially you find yourself having lots of you and not uh, enough of uh, the other kind of characteristics that you do not possess. So it's important that you look for diversity in, in your recruitment and, and recruit people because they're different, not because they're the same. Um, but of course, compatibility and ability to have rapport with them is going to be important. Um, so don't recruit on sameness, recruit on diversity. Um, you will have a much stronger foundation for, for a business um, in terms of the different kind of skills that might be needed at different stages.